Okay, now that we've inserted a couple of new records into our data set, I want to clean up our data set. So I'm just going to go down to the terminal window and clear it. Um, and I want to start by um, looking at our query. Okay, so we've inserted Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Uh, we have a couple of Zach Neto records. Um, I believe his actual number is nine. So I want to get rid of um, I want to delete three records. I want to delete Kamala Harris, I want to delete Donald Trump, and I want to delete Zach Neto. Okay, so those are the three records that I actually want to remove. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. I have this untitled file. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, looks like I wasn't able to, so uh, I'll not save that. I'll create a new file. I'm going to save this file as delete.mjs. Okay, and uh, essentially I'm going to need similar libraries that I had for the insert, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab some of those things. Uh, essentially I'm going to grab the whole insert and bring that over to the delete. Um, I'm no longer inserting a record, so I'm no longer going to have the put item command, but it's in the same library and it's the delete item command. Okay, I still need the DynamoDB client. I still need to marshal data. I still need to create a new client connected to my local instance. Uh, I still need the table name being baseball stats. Um, but I no longer need this item. What I actually need is the key for the record that I want to delete. So this is going to be a key parameter. And then when I send this, uh, I'm not sending a put item command, I'm sending a delete item command. Okay, so the records that I want to delete are Donald Trump, um, so player info underscore LAA and a sort key of ABC, and then player info LAA, sort key of XYZ, and then the last record was Zach Neto, where I have this um, duplicate record essentially where they have different sort keys, um, where the sort key is 99. Okay, so the key that I want to delete is going to be the team ID being player info underscore LAA and I'm going to in fact marshal this data again and then the sort key being ABC okay so that's the first record I want to delete okay so that's the key but I know that AWS is not going to like this key the way I've set it up right now. So if I try to do the delete right now where I'm trying to de delete uh, Donald Trump um, based on the sort key, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to run this code. So if I clear this and I run my command delete.mjs, okay, you'll notice I get an error message and the error message is basically saying, hey, I don't know what those values are that you're talking about. It's, it's not a great error message. Like there's nothing really here, but it's complaining about this key not being marshaled. Okay, I'm not describing the data for that key. Okay, so if I clear this and I actually save the file, so I clear and then I try to run the delete again. Now you'll notice that I get this status code of 200, which means it was okay, and I should be able to query and see that. Um, that Donald Trump record is now gone from my data set. Okay, so I do the same thing, but this time I want to target Kamala Harris with the delete. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use XYZ there. Okay, again, I get a status code of 200. If I try to do that again, okay, so I want to run the same command. Okay, so I get status code of 200. Um, Interesting. Um, you'll notice it was successful, um, but the only difference being is that my consume capacity, my capacity unit shows up um, because I didn't actually delete a record. So it's okay that I try to do a delete with a record that doesn't exist. Okay, it's still okay. Um, but that consume capacity is going to come back because now I'm reading data. Um, if I try to do the delete with Zach Neto, where the the sort key is 99, okay, you'll notice that I get um, no consumed capacity there for doing the delete. And now if I do my query, I should see that 
Donald Trump and Kamala Harris and Zach Neto, um, the, the kind of imposter Zach Neto record, are all gone. Okay, so I'm able to successfully delete um, those records from my data set. Okay, there's one additional record that I have in my data set, which is Nolan Shanuel. Uh, he's their new first baseman. Okay, um, it might be nice to uh, move some of this code into a function definition so that um, instead of hard coding this player every time, what if instead I passed the player that I wanted to delete um, into a function definition so I didn't have to actually change my source code, but instead I could just change that incoming parameter. Okay, so what if I change this to a function definition? So if I wanted to make this a traditional JavaScript function, I'd have a function called delete um, record, where I pass in the record key, and then I would do all of this stuff. And I'll just indent this. And you'll notice it's complaining that this is an a await. They're only allowed inside of async functions. So I can go ahead and say this is an asynchronous function. Okay. And then the way I want to handle this is this record key is going to come in. I'm going to say that the record key is going to be this JSON. So I'm just going to use that parameter in the place of um, the hard-coded value that I had before. Okay, um, and now um, what I want to do is instead of logging the data here, I'm going to return the data. And then what I can do is I can um, say, here's the record that I want to delete. So here's my const record key equal to, and I want to delete Nolan Chanuel, so team ID being LAA, player info LAA, and then Nolan Chanuel's um, sort key is 18. Okay, so that's the record key that I actually want to delete. Record key to delete. And then I'm going to go ahead and call my function. So I'll have a results equal to delete record. Passing in the record key to delete. And then I can log that results here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. And if I try to run this delete now, you'll notice I get this pending promise. Okay, so what I have to do is actually await the delete. Um, but because I got that pending promise, I think I actually did remove Nolan Chanuel. Okay, so unfortunately I deleted Nolan Chanuel. So let's go ahead and delete Zach Neto this time. Um, but this time I have the await in place. So I'm going to delete the actual Zach Neto record where his sort key is 9. Okay, and we'll try this again. Okay, and you'll notice I get the same exact results that I got before when I was doing the delete um, where I didn't have a function where I was passing in the record to delete. And now I should be able to confirm with my query that I just have my original data set back. Okay, so I have the four Los Angeles Angels players back in my data set, and now I'm able to pass in a record that I might want to delete. Okay, so this kind of covers all of those CRUD operations, so create, read, update, and delete. Um, now we're doing all of these things through code as opposed to from a terminal or from a command line. Uh, we're doing these things in Node.js code. And ultimately what we want to do is we want to take this Node.js code and move it over into the AWS ecosystem. And where this fits in the AWS ecosystem is this Node.js code will li ultimately live inside of a service called AWS Lambda. Okay, so um, that's where we're going is basically how do we then move this code from connecting to our local machine? Okay, so our DynamoDB client will no longer be against our local machine. Uh, it'll be against a DynamoDB instance that lives in the cloud. So instead of an endpoint, we might have a region. Okay, so if our, if our DynamoDB um, 
table lives in a region outside of where our AWS Lambda code executes, we can point our client at a specific region. Um, and then it'll run inside that AWS Lambda environment. And what that means to us is we no longer are responsible for actually having Node.js on our local system. We won't ha we won't be the ones responsible for actually running Node.js um, or NPM. What's going to happen is instead we're going to rely on AWS Lambda for that service. Okay, and then our code can run inside of AWS Lambda. So we're going to bring all of these different services, so um, scan, query, filter, insert, update, delete, all of these things are ultimately going to live in AWS Lambda. Okay, and we'll also talk about, um, right now we have one example of a function where we're passing data in to our function so that we can then... Um, pass a specific record to our delete. We could have done the same thing with insert. We could have done the same thing with scan, query, and filter, possibly. Um, we'll look at how does data actually get into our AWS Lambda functions, um, because we will have a function definition just like we did here. Okay, so those are kind of the next steps.